Hello, everyone, and welcome. Adam and here here to chat today about self care and evolution and how it's changed for us so that we can you set up rituals that really support you where you are and help you step into the version of yourself that feels good about who you are about how you feel in your body and so we're just super excited to be here today this is really just going to be like a conversation you're kind of like eavesdropping on us and um we're just it's just going to be some nice back and forth so i'm so glad to be here with you i'm so glad that you suggested this it's just a beautiful opportunity um, for us to share about how things have changed for us in our journey. So um, let's get started on that. Like how have things changed for you since you started um, yeah. taking, making yourself priority? So first I want to say that for I feel like our wellness journey, our self-care journey is like ongoing, ever going. And so we make these strides and we learn and then we're still growing and we're still going. So I don't feel like I've mastered, you know, anything, but I've definitely, um, I definitely think like us children, we're probably, we're really tuned into our body and intuitively what it needs, but then it gets kind of conditioned out of us and we start being into programs or listening to what others say is best for us. And then that can even correspond to what people start saying, this is the right exercise. This is the right way to eat. This is how you look as your body should look as a woman, you know, to be healthy or whatever. And there's so much uh, programming. I feel like I kind of saw um, and had to like release <laughs> over my journey. And a lot of that, and there's probably still more, right? That's my journey is still releasing the program, the judgments, the um, ideals that come and say, you know, they're still in me sometimes like that ideal of like, you know, this is perfection and you're here, you know, and just recognizing it. I feel, I feel mindfulness has been what's helped me because you start to ask like, why am I making the choice I'm making? And if you realize it's coming from a place of, well, I have to conform versus no, I really you know, I'm ignited by this activity. Um, there's a different feel for those. So my journey has more come to be, okay, forget everybody else and everything else I've ever learned. Is this activity or this meal or this option what I want? Is it best for me? Is it satisfying to me on a very soul and physical level too? And so the more I've done that, the more... I find the life that works for me, right? I find the, and you're all about that. Like find the, a self-care and the line, the practices that work for you. And they may not, they may be similar to others. And that's where you find that synergy and you co-create together because you've got similar, uh, enough similar, right? Rituals and things that really help you. But you might have some different ones that nobody uses or has. And that's totally fine. Like it's how you feel about yourself and how you feel in your body that really matters. So that's what I was thinking. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I totally, totally agree. The alignment is so important. I'm um, getting to know yourself and what works for your body and what works for your mind and what makes you feel good about who you are, like is so valuable and so important. And that was really an evolution for me because when I started wanting to take better care of myself, it really came from a place of, I was so depleted that I was like exhausted and completely burnt out and was just like, I need to take better care of myself. Had no idea what that looked like really. Like it was very much, I just knew that something had to give. I couldn't go on living this way. Like it wasn't fun. I, it was really just in the hustle very much eat, sleep, work, repeat. So like when I began, it was almost kind of an escape for me. Like the self-care mm -hmm. practices became an escape from my life to escape from what I didn't want to escape yeah. from that feeling of exhaustion and to just be like, so honestly, when I think back to it, it wasn't a super healthy start for me. Like it was very much let me get out of where I am. And um, it was, I 
I would kind of disappear for weeks at a time and just disappear mm. into my life, escape into maybe not the most healthy habits. And then I started to realize, okay, this is not really doing what I want it to do. Like I'm not experiencing what I want to experience. Nothing in my life is really changing. I'm just kind of escaping into my life. Like, yes, I'm more, I kind of disconnected from people in my life, from things in my life and escaped into myself. I'm like, well, this is not really what I want. Like, this is not what I want to experience. So then I really started to focus on like the physical, like really moving from, okay, I can't just escape. I need to move into some kind of physical activity. So like the physical health self-care was really important. So, you know, Mm -hmm. enough water and enough sleep and eating mindfully and making choices that felt good. And so I really feel like it was started with the escape. Then it started with the physical stuff really getting. And then I was like, okay, so I feel better in my body. Um, I mean, it definitely helped all those things certainly, certainly helped. And I felt a lot better in my body, but I still wasn't at home with who I was. My mind was really anxious. I would find myself getting stressed and overwhelmed and angry and resentful a lot. So it was like, no, there's still something missing here. So I was like, well, there's some mindset work that needs to be addressed. So like I dug into the mindset piece. Mm -hmm. of it and so I was like okay I need to talk to myself more positively I need to be more grateful I need to anchor into what's good um really dealing with all those sides of it and then as it started to get really good then but I was like there's still something missing like there was all it was always like there was a next step I'm like there's not quite where I want to be with this yet and I was really patient about well I maybe not patient about it but (laughs) I wanted to be patient about it. I was, I went easy with it. Like I didn't get, I didn't get super frustrated or overwhelmed as I improved the mindset, but there were still pieces of me that was like, why can't I figure this out? Like what, what, what is missing? So when I added the spiritual piece, the really connecting to myself, connecting to what was important to me connecting with the divine that's all around us all the time that we're not really always tuned into or paying attention to like life is working out for us right like if you look for the evidence of that you will find the evidence that life is working out for us so adding that piece on top of the physical the mental and then marrying that really brought it all together in a real holistic way that helps me so much and to navigate the challenges even with more ease and grace and just feeling so much better about my body, about who I am and not worried about what other people think about me or what other people think about what I'm doing or what society says is right. Um, I don't belong in a box. (laughs) Neither do you, like you don't belong in a box. I definitely believe that that awakening piece is huge and is to me, that's true wellness. And it just, then it just kind of channels into your, uh, your mind and your body and everything else. Cause if you're trying on your own to shift your thoughts and focus on the positive or whatever, usually we don't succeed. It's just very um, ego-based, right? We, we probably use the ego and spirit based in our kind of understanding of life. So if you're just about looking good, right? It's an ego. It's the motivation will not help you long-term. You may do some crash diets and you may do some extensive exercise and you could even shift your body. I have, I have a friend that she actually was a bodybuilder. She, and she said she was um, the leanest and the most muscular she'd ever been in her life. And she was the most unhappy that she had ever thought possible because she was so disconnected from herself. And, and now she's actually like 50 pounds more than her, but she's healthy and she's happy and such a different piece of understanding that it's, um, you know, there's this energy that we are just a time being, it's just a time being that we're in this actual body that we are right now. And, you know, if you look at it that way, how much importance do we place on this body that's going to be turning back to dust at some point in our future, you know, but what about the soul that's going to keep going? Are we paying attention to that? Are we investing in its health? Um, Because that's, what's going to be lasting outlasting this life. So I definitely feel that. And one thing I've learned 
is um, the shifts that I make in, in that area then affect my body, my self-care, the feedback that I'm getting. Um, it's very interwoven. So if you look in a mirror and you're not satisfied with your body, there's work to do first on accepting and loving that body just as it is, that it got you here. I even think, I do this thing, I've got extra fat on my body and I have since having children and I've struggled with stress levels with being a caregiver. It's hard for me to get all the, the extra fat like off my body, right? But I've learned that our bodies do that to protect us that they sense stress is like, oh, it's going to be starvation time or whatever. We have these genetics. And so if you're, if you've had a really stressful life or experience and you put on weight, celebrate your body that it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do when it's under stress. And so the idea is not to stress about the extra weight or whatever, but find the ways, the mindfulness, the meditation to de-stress, to de-stress your system. So your body gets to set the message that it doesn't need that you know, extra weight or whatever. I'm still there. I'm still learning how to de-stress my body from lifestyle stress because, but you know, like I said, it's a journey and I'm not going to harp on the fact that my body still has stressful um, episodes. <laughs> I would say that I have to work through. Yes, absolutely. Like that nervous system regulation is super important, right? Because if you're in that constant stress and anxiety and overwhelm, which I completely understand, like been in that, been in that place where it's just all feels like too much, then like you, you need to get that under control and come to use the practices and rituals that are going to support you and bringing you back to calm. Um, <clears throat> that is, that's really going to be super supportive mm -hmm. in helping you achieve your goals. You're right. Like you, you need to really love your body now as it is right where it is. And I know that's really hard. Like I get that. It's really hard. I had a 300 pound body at one point. I didn't love that body. Like, but the reason why it was 300 pounds was because I wasn't loving it. I was abusing it. I was beating up on it. Like it, you don't get to that place by choosing things that are, you know, making you feel good about yourself. Like, you don't, you're not gonna feel good about yourself at that weight, but it's because of what you're saying to yourself. It's about how you're yeah. treating yourself. It's about not and feeling worthy enough, you know? And comfort eating, comfort eating is a real um, coping skill, right? That mm -hmm. you're feeling so depressed or so your nervous system is un not regulated and it sees food as this source of comfort because it will simulate your brain and it will have this response. And if you get into that cycle, that's how we get obese or extra calories we don't need that our body's like, hey, what do I gotta do with all these now? But a lot of times it's because we went to food first instead of actually regulating the nervous system and then reevaluate, do I really need food right now? Or was it just a coping skill of this desire for food, this hunger was it was a really hungering regulation, you know? So yes. I'm learning to catch that in myself. Cause I still, I think we all, I don't think we're ever going to never comfort eat. Like it's just doing it in moderation. Probably we, we learn like you're not going to completely binge anymore because you, I mean, also I've done every, I've binged. I actually had bulimia for a while. I know what it's like to overeat and and then you feel sick. And so the feedback of my body is like, I don't want to return there. Right. I don't want to have that kind of experience. Like I didn't feel good. Like it was very stressful. Um, it's even stressful on the body to overeat because the body. And if you ever notice mm -hmm. you overeat, what does your body want to do? It wants to sleep after it's like, this is too much. We can't, we can't send any energy to her brain. Like, darn it. If she needs to go to sleep, go unconscious so we can deal with all this stuff, all this extra energy in here. So sometimes I think we're looking for, yeah, we're looking for that some solution outside of ourselves, right? And food can become that easy comfort. Um, but I do think the middle ground is we are supposed to enjoy our meals and we have taste buds for a reason. So you should enjoy, if you're going to eat something, you should be happy while you're eating it and enjoy it. But we can also eat it in, you know, slower to enjoy it. We can make healthier choices that our body can handle. So that's one of my practices. I really try to make meals, eat things that I enjoy 
um, that call to me. And if I'm going to decide to have a dessert or a treat, I'm going to fully align and enjoy it. I'm not going to beat myself up for it. Like, why? I'm going to have this piece of pie and then I'm going to feel guilty about it. That just like defeated the whole purpose. <laughs> so I definitely learned, like, I would say, and you probably too, like we have a relationship with food and how do we mm -hmm. have a healthy relationship? It's not going to be perfect, but can we have a healthy relationship with our food? Yes, absolutely. I, like all those things are all things that I do and practice. And um, it's really about tuning into what your body needs as well. Like we're so disconnected from our body. We're so in our head. It's all a bit, like, it's the mental piece of, well, salad is healthy. It's the mental piece yeah. of like, uh, <laughs> French fries are bad. Like, you know, we have all these connotations with food where it's like, let's instead let's tune into our body and ask it, what do you need? Like, what is it that you need from me? And this works for all things, not just food, like yeah. in terms of movement, in terms of if you need rest, like it's really getting out of your head and into your body and understanding it has so much wisdom for you. It's telling you and communicating with you all the time. So tuning into that. And I know that that can be really hard. So I always really suggest that people start with alignment and focusing on, okay, how do I want to feel? And really taking steps towards, like, once you identify how you want to feel, then ask yourself, is what I'm about to do going to help me feel that way? Is this food choice going to help me feel that way? Is this movement choice going to help me feel that way? Really tuning. Cause it can be, it's, it takes practice to tune into your body. Uh, Cause we're not used to that and we're not taught how to do yeah. it. And we're not like, you know, it's, it can I, also, be tough. I also think it, it's almost like a, being an investigator and being experimenting at times because you might not on the forefront find exactly what your body needs, but say like your friends, like, Hey, let's go for a 12 mile bike ride. And you're like, okay, I'm going to try this. And then you try it. And it's like, so horrible you're like ah the feedback might be that was you know that was too much for me or you know maybe my leg muscles aren't ready for that kind of exercise but there's some stretching or there's something else that might really support me and feel good but if you don't ever try the you know invitations or something with people you might not learn your body so I feel like it's an investigation and trying trying new things is important trying a new food you've never had before a new restaurant or you know, expand out your comfort zone and see how it does. I know like, like spicy things don't really sit well with me, but I had to learn that by having spicy things and then realizing like, I can do a little bit of mild salsa or something, but my fiance likes these jalapenos on his sub and everything. And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> That's not me, <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's like, ex make it fun. Like you're exploring you know, what your body yeah. wants to do, what, what it likes. Yes. I mean, I use most of my thirties to, with trial and error, like it really was about finding what worked for me and really tuning and tuning it. And the, the thing of it is, is making sure you're tuned in at every step. So tune in before you do something, tune in after yeah. you do something and be like, yeah. how do I feel? How does it feel? Mm -hmm. And really anchor into the things that feel really good. And make those a priority and make sure they're yeah, on the top of your list, you know? I don't know about you, but I was taught a lot, like, don't trust your feelings, like on so many levels in different programming. But you actually, you actually have to trust your feelings and the biofeedback to live. Like you literally have to, like, it's no way around it. So that programming is usually like, trust us don't trust your feelings. Like don't follow that. Like it's not helpful or healthy. Um, it also, I also feel like the emotional regulation piece is a big thing. And Pam, you've probably learned this too, because we've talked about this in our things, but when you're having an emotion, instead of judging that emotion as negative or bad or whatever, it's like being space for it, sitting with it, allowing it to move through you. That's a part of becoming more intuitive. Like I have this emotion, but it doesn't have to control me. And Pam has dogs barking right now. And then there's like an emotion in her, like, oh no, people are going to hear my dogs barking, but she's going to laugh about it and sit with it. And it's not going to get the best of her. So 
that's another two thing too. When we feel judged or even self judgment, can we sit with our own self judgment? Be like, I ate too much. Okay, that's the fact. Do you have to feel bad and shame yourself for that, or could you learn something? Okay, so if that was too much, I learned this. Like, I can't eat four or five pieces of pizza. Okay, to me, that will put me in a coma. <laughs> I will fall asleep. But I had to learn it because it was like in front of me and it's like pizza night. It's like, I want to indulge, but it's too much bread, too much carb, whatever. But when I learned that, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have two slices and a little salad I make because then I know I'm not going to be done for the evening. I'm going to enjoy myself, whatever. But if I, if I sat there and said, gosh, I'm horrible for eating that pizza and I can't believe it. I probably would go and like binge eat more food or something like trying to alleviate the shame. You know, there's that potential. Or I'm never going to eat pizza again because I associate pizza with being out of control and it's bad for me. And, you know, as opposed to finding a middle ground. So I think if we could just sit with our judgment sometimes and say, okay, here's a judgment. I can, I can not align with it. I can listen to it. See, maybe it's coming from the way I was taught and my culture and everything and being a woman like there's so much more judgment about appearance of a woman even as we age I know with like Hollywood and stuff you see it's okay for the guys to get gray and get wrinkly but the women have to get Botox and surgery <laughs> like I know some guys do it too but there's this general thing in America like young fit is best you know and let's like feel bad about having wrinkles or a little extra weight or you know, many of us have had children and completely changes the structure of your body to carry another life in you. And to think you're going to go back to your pre-baby size and weight. Some women do, but a lot of us don't. You've got, now you've got children to care for. And, you know, your body went through some trauma. I had C-sections and trauma like that. Uh, you're going to have a different body. And you just have to accept that and love what your body was able to do in that whole process. So I think the I think the being a big enough space for the emotions to rise, learning that emotional regulation, that's how that's helped me. That's then corresponded to how I I look at food or you know, I don't go to it as a go-to or even exercise. I used to when I was stressed out, I used to go run six miles. Now that wasn't actually good for my body and it hurt my knees at times. And it was like, it was like that. Um, like, I think you kind of like self-care. It looks like it's good for you, but you're not doing it for the right reason. You're doing it to distract or almost even punish. Like if I had a bad feeling, it was like, take it out on the treadmill or take it out on at the gym. And it still did it. It did. It might've given me a heart rate, right? It, it did something for my body, but it never dealt with that core issue that I didn't know how to regulate that emotion. And I was looking for something external. No. Can you still hear me? I don't know what's happened. We're going to hope that everything is okay. No, it says it's good. I wonder if we're still live. I'm going to have a look. Bear with me. Hopefully all is okay. Oh. I'm going to tap into the live. Hi. Oh, I think it might be Autumn. Yeah, it's her. Okay. So we'll see if she can reconnect. Um, and I'm just going to continue on with what she's saying so beautifully because she was saying it so beautifully um it was it it's so true like it's learning to sit with your emotions with who you are and allowing it to be okay to be who you are and to be at home with who you are and to learn to love and accept yourself as you are and knowing that yes you can make improvements but being with yourself and getting to know yourself in a very deep and meaningful way is really what changes your life. There's no one ritual or no one practice that you're gonna put into your life that's going to make 
all the difference. It's a, the collection of things that you do that help you um, become more of who you are. Uh, it's funny because she's writing me. Um, I'm just going to write her back. Welcome to technology. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'll just continue to riff on a bit while she's still here. But it's it's the holistic approach, and really, this is why my Facebook group is called Mind Body Soul Connection because it is about marrying all those things: your mind, your body, your soul, and bringing them all together in a way that supports you in creating a life that really makes you excited, that makes you feel good about who you see in the mirror every day, that makes you feel good about who you are and how you show up in the world. Hello, welcome did back. Say, did we you just say put? <laughs> I did. I continued. I I thought it was me. I'm like, no, my internet connection is good. So there's this little riff in the middle that's like, <laughs> me, that's me okay. Just, like, so being, this is a perfect stuff. example of the messiness of life, you know. And I think just being a, I'm like, okay, fine. What happened on my end is like, I was like, Pam just disappeared, and I'm like, oh, better send her a message. And then it was like, you have no internet connection. <laughs> on my computer I'm like okay it's me so probably because we had all these snowstorms and they're doing something and who knows but anyways I am back and I appreciate you like, you were going on so beautifully about it and like <laughs> expressing it so well so I continue to like pick up in the same kind of place but it's yeah you're just, like it's we have to learn to sit with ourselves to love all parts of ourselves and to recognize that if there are things that we want to change that's okay like that, that's perfectly okay. A, you're not going to change it all at once. So let's not try to do that and overwhelm our nervous system even more than it probably already is. Yes. Um, so, you know, go slow and give yourself yes. permission to, you know, be patient and expect that it's going to take some time. There is no quick fix. Like everyone True. needs to know that there is no quick fix, but there are ways to make it easier and more fun and more aligned to you. And it just takes some practice and getting used to and trying new things and really learning and, how to be yourself. And every aligned day, I always feel this way, like every, you live, live in alignment that day and the next day and they add up, like they really help you shift. And you might not see the change in yourself overnight, but others sometimes give you the feedback, like, wow, you really change and you're like oh I have <laughs> okay it's the it's the one step at a time choosing yourself for me a lot of it comes down to choosing myself because I have children I have others in my life I have a relationship I could put a lot of things above myself if I want but and, and I have responsibilities so they're part of my life but can I find the role where I'm also a priority where I'm also important Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think you're frozen again. I think that this, this is really important to touch on. I'm going to see if you come back, but um, I think it is really important to touch on this and to say that I understand that you struggle with making yourself a priority, that it can feel really difficult to put yourself on the top of the list when you have other responsibilities, when you have family, when you have a job, when you have other priorities in your life. But the thing of it is, is that no one gets the best of you if you're at the bottom of the list. And yeah. so I always like make it be this, I, I try to bring people to this graphic of if your cup is on the bottom of the pyramid, um, then you're the last a to get anything. Cause you're at the bottom, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're the last to get at anything and it doesn't serve anybody. Like there's no one underneath you. If you're at the bottom of the pyramid, it doesn't serve anybody. But if you move your glass to the top of the pyramid and you start filling it up from there, then all the glasses underneath you start to fill up too. When you overflow into yourself, when you give yourself what you need, when you treat yourself like someone you love, then all that love and all that gratitude and all that beauty that you're creating for yourself flows into everybody in your life. It is a gift to take care of you. It is a true gift to everyone in your life. Hi, I think you're okay. Am I now. back? Am I, my internet said it was unstable. <laughs> So hopefully it stays stable. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah. I think we're we're all often taught the opposite. Put yourself last. Um, 
but then everybody gets just the leftovers of you mm -hmm. and you you're not really benefiting anybody like it's not the quality it could be if you want to give to others and really be a source of inspiration and love and service why not make it excellent by loving yourself like you're saying being a full cup and giving the overflow so i think understanding like the um the true matrix of our energetics or whatever that that's how it works best helps us choose ourselves like as i'm choosing myself i'm choosing everyone else too like we're one <laughs> and and we're going to make the the better relationship with that priority so i agree yes absolutely i love this it's so good it's if amazing. you get sick of my internet being wonky <laughs> you can always let me go <laughs> oh, hopefully it, <laughs> okay <laughs> hopefully it takes yeah no it's all, it's all good amazing yeah no it's just it really is just about you know tuning into yourself being more mindful about your choices tuning into oh, how it makes you feel and just, you I know, know what I want to yourself say this was coming to me. I was thinking about the times in my life where I had a account accountability partner. Um, this is why I think coaching is so important. And then like, you know, I have, a, I do a community dance group. So there's lots of us steering each other on. And so I think that when we try to do it alone, we often fall back to our previous patterns, but when someone mm -hmm. else is there and there's that reflection and accountability piece, we tend to encourage each other and keep moving forward. I, I used to do this with a friend. We'd be like, okay, what are you doing today for movement? Okay, I'll tell you, you do tell me like years ago before internet was even, like we would kind of like be accountability buddies or whatever. And then I had a friend like, okay, we're gonna eat vegetables every day this month. Okay, send me a picture of your vegetables. I'm sending you mine or whatever. And it was just on my journey. I remember those times they stand out to me because I did it. I was like, I knew I had that accountability. So I had to show up. Um, or my other person or whatever. And it kept me, kept me consistent. And we've talked about like, you can't shock your nervous system by saying, okay, here's the plan and here's the schedule. And your body's just like, no, that's too much change, too much at once, but oh. something small, like, and that's why I think it's so if people sign up for like a coach coaching experience with you, they're going to show up for themselves. Like that's what they're really agreeing to. Because someone's now watching <laughs> and encouraging and present in their journey. And it makes it, it makes a huge difference. Yes, I agree. I've had some form of mentor now for three or four years. And I, it's, it's an invaluable experience and it's an experience. It's part of, it's part of making it fun. It's not a, just about hitting a goal or getting to a place. Like this is a constant evolution. It's never over. Your life yeah. is never over. These practices are meant to support your life. They're not just meant to support you in achieving a thing. It's meant to support the life that you want to create for yourself. And that's really what it's all about. It's about using this body to experience life at the highest level and being totally connected to who you are, what you want, and what you want to accomplish in your time here. Um, and I just love, I, I love the, a, like you said, the accountability of having someone where I go to them and I say, this is what I want. Can you please help me achieve it? And it wasn't always, I, I didn't always hit every single goal that I um, set out to hit because it's not about the goal anyway. It's about yeah. who you become along the way. It's about Very how true. your life changes. It's about how your mindset shifts. It's about how you look at things differently, that perspective. It, that, those are the gifts that you get from having someone in your corner for having people who understand, for having a community of people who lift you up. Like it's so important to have those connections with others. Um, I, yeah, totally, totally agree. I had super valuable experiences inside your dance group. It was amazing. And it's so much more than dance. For those of you who haven't experienced um, Autumn's dance community, it's amazing. I've done it for a very long time. And it's, a, it's very much about connecting to yourself at your core, right? It's not just about let's show up and dance, although the dance is super fun. Like it's super fun. It's, it, is, it is about a more deep connection to your movement, to why you're doing it, to what you want yeah. and to creating a life that excites you. 
Like it, it's all. Yes. And then I think when you, you get at this empowerment, like, setting a goal means you actually believe in yourself and your ability to create and to shift your life. And that's what we want to get back to. Like we can make different choices. We can reevaluate our life and say, okay, this habit or this style or whatever relating isn't the best for me. And I can, I can shift, I can change. So it's, it's all encompassing of all of our life. Like not just how we're eating or how we're moving, how we're talking with people, how we, you know, see money, how everything can shift. If we believe that we are the creators and at least that we co-create with the universe, right? We have that co-created experience. So yes, I appreciate that. I probably can't stay on too much longer, but Yes, I do have uh, two different dance groups that are going on, um, intuitive dance. So it's moving your body in what ways that feels good to you. And some people move slower, some people move faster. We do some breath work and we just have supportive discussion too. Like today's question was, what are you celebrating yourself for today? And just to remember to celebrate, like as opposed to our inner critic coming out and being like, you did this and this and this and this wrong. You know, we don't wanna do that anymore. <laughs> We want to say, we want to look at all the things we're doing right that are helping our body and our, and our system. So definitely invite any ladies who are interested to check us out. You can always check out a, se a session with no strings attached and just see if it's a good fit or not. I love that. And that celebration piece is so important. Like celebrate every step that you take in the right direction. Like celebrate the heck out of it. I literally have a post, a journaling prompt before bed every night. I do my gratitude journaling and my celebration post every night before I go to bed. And it just puts you in that space of accomplishment, of satisfaction, yes. of knowing that yes. you accomplished something great, you know? And it's all great. Like celebrate yourself. There's not enough I mean celebration going on. Even if you have to get stickers and check marks, and sometimes I feel like we forget how much the brain like responds to positive feedback. It's like, I ate my vegetables and you put a check and a smiley face on something. It like tells your body like, yeah, keep doing that. You know, sometimes we need to give that extra affirmation to ourselves. There's nothing wrong with it. Yes. I love it so much. Thank you so much, Adam. This has been so beautiful. So totally invite you to check out Adam's group. It's amazing. I loved being a part of that for such a long time. And I'm also going to invite you to join me inside my Facebook community, Mind, Body, Soul Connection, free resource for you to come in and learn more about the mind, body, soul connection to really connect more deeply to yourself. And we do a lot of rituals and practices and workshops. And I have a new masterclass coming up and I have a program that could further support you if you really want to go deeper on creating a life that you love and feel incredible in your body and about who you are as a beautiful woman. So if any of that interests you, we'll pop some links into the comments of um, the thread so that you can follow up with us directly if you have any questions or anything about that. But thank you so much for this, Adam. This was absolutely beautiful. You're welcome. And I, yeah, I do want to just celebrate you too, Pam, because you show up so consistently in your group and you are so thoughtful and thorough and committed and you're always smiling. You can see the joy radiating off of Pam as she's talking about choosing yourself, loving yourself, creating the life that serves you. I mean, I go in there just to feel that energy um and to reiterate that for myself so if you need a cheerleader pam is your cheerleader thank you so much autumn that means so much to me and i you know i love you so much and appreciate you so much and you have helped me grow so much in this last year the power of community right the power of finding your yeah. people like yeah like there's such we lift each other up and we support each other and encourage each other it's a beautiful thing yeah all right all right well, thank Thanks you so much so for much. having me. <laughs> all right. We will be chatting. All right, all. If you have any questions, please let us know. We will be happy to address anything that comes up for you. All in love of light. We will be talking again soon. Bye. Awesome.